Hi everyone, this is Justin Hibbert from Inceptivist, and today we're going to be reviewing iMovie 10. iMovie is hands down the best entry-level movie editing software. PC users may be familiar with Windows Movie Maker, but if you used it any length, you know how buggy and rigid it is. There's really no comparing it to the robust and versatile features of iMovie. Now, iMovie isn't free, but it's only 15 bucks, which makes it a viable option for novice level movie making. And sorry, PC users, this program is only available on Macs. In some of the latest versions of iMovie, Apple rolled out some really neat advanced features like the ability to do green and blue screens, split screens, overlays, and inbox overlays. So what does Apple have for us in their latest version, iMovie 10? Let's take a look. First, you'll notice some changes right away. iMovie has added some nice new themes. In iMovie's previous version, Apple introduced template trailers. In iMovie 10, they offer a few new trailers to choose from. One of the major changes in iMovie is the projects area, which they label updated projects. In previous versions, you created events and projects and could upload your video footage into separate events. Now the projects area is a combination of all your projects and events into one. The positive side is that you don't have to look from event to event to find the footage you want to reuse. The downside to this change is that your footage can sort of get lost in the mix, though you are able to search for the particular footage you're looking for. Another minor addition is the theater, which is a visual layout of all your projects. It's nice, but not really an important feature. All right, so let's talk about the biggest change, the timeline. You'll notice that iMovie 10's timeline has a slightly different look, a little more like what you might see in a professional program. The biggest change, however, is actually movie editing. In iMovie 9, each component, the audio, film, and still pictures had their own control panel. When you wanted to change the audio fade time, for example, you clicked on the audio control button and a panel popped up. That has all changed drastically. For iWork and iLife, Apple went with what I like to call a shared settings area. We'll be doing a review of Pages and Keynote in a later review where I'll go over how they've gone to a shared settings area in those programs as well. But in iMovie 10, this is located above the movie preview screen. If you think it's a lot more simplified, you'd be correct. But that's not such a great thing. Let's start with some of the film editing features. You'll notice that once I click on a video clip, I can now use some of the options at the top. There are some nice additions like white balance and skin tone balance. Probably the best change Apple introduced is the way the film is trimmed. In previous versions, you had to select the area you wanted to delete and then delete it. In iMovie 10, you simply drag the edge to trim it. The film speed editor is a nice change as well. In previous versions, you had to use a panel and kind of guess the amount of change you needed. Here, you right click on the film, choose the speed editor, and you can adjust the speed, watching how this affects your clip. A very nice change in iMovie 10. Let's move on to audio. Just like the film, you can adjust audio settings in the top settings area. However, you'll notice that the audio mixer has been removed. Not a fan of taking that out. So if you want to change the volume, you can do that in the settings, or you can do this visually by dragging this line up or down. It took me a while to figure out how to fade the audio. It seemed difficult at first, but I like this change. Just drag this little button to the point where you want it to fade in or out. It's a really nice feature, especially when you have a couple of tracks that you're trying to crossfade. Lastly, let's talk about titles. While iMovie 10 does offer some more title options, I think Apple took a couple of steps backwards in this feature. Probably one of the biggest negatives is that you can't control the fade times of text. That's a huge downer for more advanced projects with iMovie. Changing fonts and text color is a lot easier in iMovie 10, but some of the advanced features like kerning and line spacing available in previous versions have been removed. So what do I love most about iMovie 10? I'd have to say I think the best change has to be their timeline trimming function. It makes video editing so much faster. Our suggestion for Apple's iMovie feature updates is to bring back some of the advanced features. 
if nothing else, at least text fades. Secondly, titles are and always have been very limiting. You really have no control over where to put your text. It'd be great to be able to place the text wherever you want it on the screen. And third, I really like the iMovie trailer features. It's a bit cheesy, but it's a nice entry level feature. What would make it even better is the ability to edit and eliminate unwanted slides. So that's iMovie 10. It's $15, well worth the money. iMovie 10 offers some very nice features. If you do buy it, I'd suggest holding on to previous versions of iMovie just in case you want to do something and find that this new version has eliminated that feature. In the video description, I've provided links to both iMovie 10 as well as where you can get previous versions of iMovie for free. So for Inceptivist, I'm Justin Hibbard. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to keep an eye out for future product reviews.